Welcome to Food Safety and Temporary Food Establishments Part 3, presented by the Environmental Health Division of the 1st District Health Unit. This is Part 3 of the food education course that is only valid for those employees that work in temporary food establishments. If you work in any other food establishment, you will need to view the nine parts of the 1st District Health Unit Food Safety for Food Service Employees course. As you watch the presentation, take notes. At the end of each part, you will be given a test code write it down in your notes. Once you have watched all four parts, contact a First District Health Unit office to schedule your test. Bring your notes, the four-part test code, a valid photo identification, and the test fee with you to be eligible to take the test. In this section, we will look at food preparation processes, including thawing, cooking, cooling, reheating, and providing samples to the public. Four acceptable methods for thawing frozen foods under refrigeration at 41 degrees Fahrenheit or below, as part of the process of cooking the raw food to the required temperature, in a microwave, as long as the thawed food is immediately cooked to the required temperature, or under running water. When you thaw food under running water, the food must be completely submerged. The water must be below 70 degrees Fahrenheit. The water must be flowing with enough velocity to wash away any loose food particles, and no part of the food may exceed 41 degrees Fahrenheit during the process. Cooking is the most effective step we have for reducing bacterial contamination on raw products. However, cooking will not kill toxins or spores that some bacteria produce. The first set of temperatures is for raw eggs. Eggs that are broken and cooked for immediate service must be cooked to at least 145 degrees Fahrenheit for at least 15 seconds. All other eggs, such as those are batched or pooled, must be cooked to at least 155 degrees Fahrenheit for at least 17 seconds. The next set of temperatures are for raw fish. Fish includes all fresh or saltwater fish, any fish eggs, molluscan shellfish, crustacean shellfish, and any other aquatic animal that is not a bird or mammal. Whole pieces of fish must be cooked to at least 145 degrees Fahrenheit for at least 15 seconds. Ground fish, or any food containing ground fish, must be cooked to at least 155 degrees Fahrenheit for at least 17 seconds. And stuffed fish, or any stuffing containing fish, must be cooked to a temperature of at least 165 degrees Fahrenheit for at least 15 seconds. The next set of cooking temperatures is for raw meat, which includes beef, pork, lamb, goat, and game animals such as buffalo and elk. Whole muscle intact meats must be cooked to at least 145 degrees Fahrenheit for at least 15 seconds. Ground or tenderized meat, or foods containing ground or tenderized meat, must be cooked to at least 155 degrees Fahrenheit for at least 17 seconds. And stuffed meat, or stuffing that contains meat, must be cooked to at least 165 degrees Fahrenheit for at least 15 seconds. Our final category of raw meat is poultry. Whether it is whole, ground, or stuffed, all raw poultry must be cooked to at least 165 degrees Fahrenheit for at least 15 seconds. To verify cooking temperatures, you must use a thermometer. You are required to have a thermometer appropriate to the foods that you are cooking. You must always take the temperature in the center of the food where it is the coldest. And you want to clean and sanitize the thermometer stem before checking the temperature of food and in between checking the temperatures of different pieces of food. Thermometer examples include bimetallic stem thermometers and digital stem thermometers. Bimetallic stem thermometers are useful for checking the temperatures of large pieces of food where the temperature is similar throughout the food. Digital stem thermometers are appropriate for taking the temperatures in a wide variety of foods. More thermometer examples include infrared surface thermometers and thermocouples. Infrared surface thermometers are not appropriate for checking the temperatures of foods that are being cooked from a raw state. Thermocouples are a type of digital thermometer that are very accurate and useful for checking the temperatures of a wide range of food products. The next food preparation process is the cooling of hot foods. During the cooling process, TCS foods spend time in the danger zone. You must cool foods as quickly as possible to minimize this time spent in the danger zone. 
While you're cooling hot food, you must monitor the temperature of TCS foods and the time it takes to cool the foods down. The correct cooling process involves cooling cooked TCS foods from above 135 degrees Fahrenheit to below 41 degrees Fahrenheit in six hours or less, as long as the food goes from 135 degrees Fahrenheit to below 70 degrees Fahrenheit in the first two hours of the cooling process. You then have the remainder of the six hours to go from 70 degrees Fahrenheit to below 41 degrees Fahrenheit. If the food isn't cooled to the proper temperatures in the required time, it must be thrown away. There are many different techniques you can use to cool foods properly and quickly. You should use shallow containers as opposed to deeper containers. The stock pot is too deep, the shallower pan is better. Also, you want to use containers that shed heat quickly. Stoneware is designed to retain heat, so it is not a good container for cooling foods down. Metal sheds heat much more quickly. The next food preparation process is reheating. When you reheat TCS foods, you must reheat them to a temperature of at least 165 degrees Fahrenheit for at least 15 seconds, regardless of what the initial required cooking temperature was for that food. The food must go from below 41 degrees Fahrenheit to at least 165 degrees Fahrenheit in two hours or less. If you reheat foods in a microwave, heat the food to at least 165 degrees Fahrenheit, then allow it to stand for at least two minutes. The next food preparation process involves distributing samples to the public. It is important to distribute samples in such a way so that the samples are not contaminated by the consumers or by the persons dispensing the sample. You can use things like sampling spoons, small portion cups, toothpicks stuck into the food. Do not put the toothpicks just in a pile where people can touch all of the toothpicks that other people will use. You can also hand the customer an individual sample or put individual samples on a napkin or piece of deli tissue. Make sure that if you are sampling things such as dip, that your customers are not double dipping. This is the end of part three. Your test code for part three is one nine.